and welcome. The firm of Odgers and Bernstein has been playing an important role in bringing India and UK together, particularly in finding the people who will drive the business that bridges the two continents and specifically in the executive search business. I'm now joined by Alice Dare Spink, managing partner of the Odgers and Bernstein's India business. Alice Dare, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Let me ask you the first question. Give us a sense uh, on what you see the India-UK business corridor, particularly from your point of view as a pretty large executive search company. Odgers Bernstein focuses on very senior executive level recruitment. We also work across all sectors in the economy. Um, all Odgers Bernstein partners are experts in, in one sector or another sector. So, so the company covers the whole of uh, the economy in India. Therefore, the view that we have of India is that there are opportunities in some sectors and less opportunities in other sectors. Senior level recruitment is predicated on growth, both domestic growth and also growth in foreign direct investment. So the hot sectors at the moment that we're seeing are the consumer-related sectors, such as healthcare, life sciences, Retail is starting to come through as companies get excited about uh, the recent legislative changes uh, for FDI and retail. And also we see some green shoots in infrastructure, which is a sector that has suffered over recent years um, because of uh, a lack of legislation coming through. Um, and we also see Indian companies who are looking to expand abroad uh, particularly into the Middle East, which has bounced back recently, and uh, into Southeast Asian countries and African countries. So there are green shoots in the economy, and there are definitely opportunities if you look in the right places. You spoke of healthcare. Are there any interesting areas within that, or can you tell us a little more about it? Because this is one area that we hear a lot about, but haven't uh, got much insight into. Well, it's interesting that you say that. Um, Healthcare is a, a huge growth sector for India, and it's got a huge amount of potential behind it too. As your uh, middle class uh, expands exponentially, uh, they're, going to in, they're going to increasingly demand uh, more complex and higher quality healthcare services. So companies, you know, to give them a bit of free advertising, such as Max, such as Apollo, such as Fortis, they've got huge potential to grow. Uh, in this country. And then secondly, there are also going to be uh, specialist opportunities as well uh, in areas such as uh, oncology uh, and also in primary healthcare too. Um, so as the consumer economy booms, uh, we see the healthcare sector tracking this boom. Now for us, uh, there's, uh, there are a number of opportunities. It's not just the growth opportunity, but also a lot of these skills have to come uh, from international markets. Uh, we're a UK headquartered company. The NHS is one of the leaders in healthcare globally. Um, and therefore, we've got a huge amount of expertise of recruiting both clinicians for healthcare organizations, but also uh, senior management. So the, the demand is there and uh, it's definitely growing. The pharmaceutical market in India has always been a strong market, uh, particularly as uh, a number of very interesting drugs uh, are coming off uh, their, uh, the period of, of not being able to be copied. Um, but healthcare services, we think, is the really exciting sector. What are the kind of cross-border trends that you're seeing, particularly from your point of view, on ground? The, the cross-border uh, opportunities for talent are the really interesting thing about working in India. The, yeah, it, it, needs to be, it needs to be stated and it needs to be uh, noted that the demand for talent is overwhelmingly for Indian talent. There's a very, very small demand uh, for non-Indians unless they have very specific skills that you can't locate in Indians. Now, Indians are global personalities. I mean, in, English is the first language of, of business in India. Uh, Indians quite often get educated abroad, they do their secondary degrees, their MBAs abroad, and increasingly they're then doing a stint of their professional careers abroad. As certain sectors develop in India, as certain sectors expand past the capacity that India has to serve them, 
Uh, increasingly, we're being asked to do global searches for Indians in the Middle East, in Europe, in the US, and elsewhere. So it, it, it's a fascinating uh, market to work in, in terms of uh, the global movement of talent. Uh, Alasdair, can you give us a sense on what are the kind of areas that you see doing well, particularly in the coming year? Well, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to give a really clear view on that. As I said, there are some pockets of opportunity, some areas that we're confident about uh, that are experiencing growth, such as uh, the oil and gas sector, the hydrocarbon sector. Uh, retail is starting to see green shoots as companies, foreign companies, are becoming confident uh, that they can invest in the Indian market. And also as Indian companies uh, start to see those investments coming in and either form joint ventures or they uh, view the market as becoming more competitive and therefore they need to uh, improve their service offering. The opportunity that we see which shouldn't be understated is the opportunity to work with Indian companies who are looking to expand abroad. These fall into a number of areas. These fall, fall into automotive, infrastructure, financial services, com some consumer areas as well. Indian companies are looking to diversify their income away from purely India because a lot of very large Indian companies uh, have mostly been domestically focused. Tata being a very good example of a company that's done it very successfully over the last 10 years. And other companies are looking at opportunities, as I said, in territories such as the Middle East, in, in the booming uh, continent of Africa, because they know that uh, having gained experience of getting things done, achieving success in India, there are plenty of markets outside of India where they can also be successful. And what are the kind of obstacles that you see towards growth? Obstacles to growth are, I think, uh, mostly down to what's going on in the current political situation. The, the, the country has a huge amount of talent, huge amount of opportunity, huge amount of potential. Uh, I've only been here for uh, three years, but my observation is that uh, if you have a clear uh, sort of legislative framework and if you have a, a government that's, that's operating and passing reforms, uh, there are really no obstacles to growth in India. Uh, there are lots of uh, macro and microeconomic issues as well, uh, but I think they're also linked to, um, to, to governmental issues. Right. Can you tell us the one thing that you've really liked about being in India? The one anecdote or one interesting insight that you can tell us? Well, people give uh, Britain and Europe uh, a hard time because of what's going on with the Euro and what's going on with the European uh, community. Uh, I've never subscribed to the fact that it's that bad. I, you know, I think it's a, a correction. However, uh, coming here is an extraordinarily exciting experience. There's a, a can-do attitude uh, there's a real belief that it's India's time. Um, I see opportunity everywhere, and as I talk to clients and potential clients, you know, the plans are big. Uh, so that's a very, very exciting uh, thing to be a part of. Thank you very much for speaking with us.